Welcome to the Awakening Podcast. I am your host and teacher, Eddie Hyatt. I'm really enjoying these episodes on testing the spirits, and it's a part of the larger overall theme of power to discern, uh, which, which we so need to be equipped to be sensitive to the spirit and able to discern what is going on in the world around us and in the church um, today as well, because deception is rampant, as was predicted by Jesus and Paul and writers of the New Testament. So for the last four days, we've been talking about how to test the spirits based on the words of John in 1 John chapter 4, verse 1 in the New Testament. He wrote and he exhorted, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. And so we have talked up to this time about how to test the criteria for testing the spirits. We've talked about the Jesus test. Uh, we talked about the word or the Bible test. We've talked about the heart test. Yesterday, we talked about the freedom test. Today, we're going to talk about the final one that we're going to look at and I'm calling it the character test, the character test. Now, the Bible is very clear about applying the character test. In Matthew chapter 7 verse 7 verse chapter Matthew chapter 7 verse 15, Jesus said, "Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing." Wow. Well, remember, deception it's the devil is all about deception, lies and deceptions. That's how he holds the world in bondage. The devil does not come in a red suit with horns and a pitchfork. Well, no, you, you would recognize him. No, Paul says he transforms himself into an angel of light, into a beautiful, impressive sounding creature. Wow. And here Jesus said, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing but inwardly they are ravenous. The word ravenous means greedy. They are ravenous or greedy wolves. By comparing false prophets with wolves in sheep's clothing, Jesus is saying that false prophets are not what they appear to be. They do not have integrity. They have all the right words. They know how to quote scripture. They know how to prophesy with words that tickle the ears but they are not what they appear to be. I'll never forget when I'm going to guess I was about nine or 10 years old. My dad was pastoring um, a assembly of God church in a small town in Tipton, Oklahoma. And I still remember, I think I was sitting down on the front seat on the left side, a small, small church, small town, small church, probably 60, 70 people on a Sunday morning, probably. But this one Sunday morning, there was a man came in dressed in a dark suit and was carrying a big black Bible and, he had, he had the appearance of a preacher, and my dad was very accommodating and um, uh, found out who he was, and he, 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 now he introduced himself to my dad as a minister of the gospel, a preacher of the gospel. So during the service, my dad invited him to come up and just address the congregation, say a word. And I still remember how he, uh, he gave this very riveting uh, story about how he had had a vision and God had shown him this very congregation in a vision. And he had come there, you know, at the direction of the Lord. And wow, how impressive. Now, I'm only 10 years old. Now, I don't know how that set with other people in the congregation and so on. But what I do remember was that um, it turned out that the man was a practicing homosexual. And he tried to... Uh, lure my 19-year-old brother into a homosexual relationship or activities. And I can still remember my brother talking to my dad, and I could tell it was a very serious conversation. And uh, now I didn't learn the details of this until, you know, later in life. And I don't know uh, you know, and, and there are so many questions that I wished I had thought uh, to ask my parents and, and even my brother while they were brothers, while they were still alive, but uh, they're all gone now. But I would like to have asked my dad well, and, and my brother, well, what happened? What did you all do? All I know is that the man 
he never showed up after that. So I don't know. If, uh, my dad must have had a talk with him or uh, or whatever and, and, you know, told him not to come back, that his his, his uh, that he wasn't a man of God and so on. But anyway, that, that was a wolf in sheep's clothing. My friends, Jesus warned us about wolves in sheep's clothing, that outwardly they look great. And they know the right words and everything, but inwardly they are greedy and ravenous wolves. So ravenous, the word Jesus used to describe these false prophets, is an extreme form of greediness that will destroy others to get what it wants. And then Jesus went on to say in verse 16 how to recognize these false prophets. He said, you will know them by their fruits. Wow. Now, fruits is something outward that you can see that's going to show up. And so fruits relates to two things. First of all, it relates to the character of the person. Secondly, the fruit would also re relate to the produce, to the fruit that these people produce in the lives of those who hear them. So character does count. It's interesting in Paul's list of criteria for those who would serve in leadership in the church. And this is in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. Character has definite priority. Prophecy, healing, and other miraculous gifts are not even mentioned in the list of criteria of those who would serve in positions of leadership in the church. It's all about character. The only thing that has any relationship to a gift, Paul says they should be able to teach. But everything else, go and read it. 1 Timothy 3, 1 and 7, it's all about character. And Paul begins this list, and this is in 1 Timothy 3, 1, by saying that a bishop, now bishop uh, is not what bishops have become. The word bishop has developed into a church office through the years as a person of authority and so on. And the New Testament church, a bishop was, um, it, it literally means overseer. And actually the word bishop, uh, the word episkopos, the Greek word, it's used interchangeably with the word for pastor and the word for elder. It was not a separate office. It was a function. It was more of a responsibility than some kind of, of, of office that had authority with it. it was, we should see it more as an, uh, a function of responsibility, responsible for oversight. But Paul says such a person must be blameless. This is 1 Timothy 3, 1. Now, the word blameless is from the Greek word, ana palimpton, and according to Thayer's Greek-English lexicon, it means irreproachable and not open to censure. In other words, a Christian leader must lead a life without reproach, giving no opportunity for censure and accusation. Boy, you say, well, that is a, man, that's a high standard. Yeah, it really is. You know, Billy Graham is an example of a Christian leader who exhibited such character. He went out of his way to give no opportunity for the enemies of the gospel to slander him and the message he preached. He made a point to never be in a room alone with a woman other than his wife. He would not even ride in an elevator alone with another woman. He also dealt with finances, with integrity and transparency. If modern charismatic prophets and preachers had lived lives of such character, what a difference it would have made. But through so many shenanigans and adulteries, the Christian name has been tarnished. It is true of them, as Paul said of the Jews of his day, for the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you. Now, somebody is going to protest. Oh, but God is a God of mercy and grace, and we shouldn't judge anybody. Now, when Jesus said, judge not lest you be judged, he was talking about having a critical Sensuous attitude that judges people based on things that are indifferent, like the language they speak, the color of their skin, their race, or their ethnicity, or what part of town they live in, or what kind of house they live in, or what kind of car they drive. 
Paul, that's what Jesus is talking about. Don't judge people. Don't stereotype people based on these, these things that are indifferent, that has nothing to do with their person and character. But in this passage, he's telling us to beware of false prophets. And in these situations, we have to make judgments. And when you're testing the spirits, you are making a, a certain sort of judgment, but not the kind Jesus told us not to do in that earlier passage. But here he told us to beware of false prophets. In other words, we have to make judgment and decide this person is a false prophet. I'm going to have to stay away from him. I'm going to have maybe rebuke him or at least stay away from him. In his letter to the Corinthians, Paul instructed the Corinthians to make these kind of judgments concerning deception and concerning what is true and false. And he ordered them to do this. He commanded them to do this concerning those who call themselves Christians but were immoral or ungodly. He, in fact, instructed Christians to have no fellowship with such people. Now, this sounds really heavy, but, but my friends, listen to this. In, for, in, in 1 Corinthians 5.11, he writes, But now I have written to you not to keep company with anyone named a brother who is sexually immoral or covetous or an idolater or a reviler or a drunkard or an extortioner, not even to eat with such a person. Therefore, put away from yourselves the evil person. Wow. Peoples whose lives do not line up with the standard of Scripture and the Word of God. Now, we all know people make mistakes. People fall. However, if they acknowledge their mistakes and ask for forgiveness, they can move on. This passage is talking about people, when we're talking about character, talking about people who are unwilling to admit their sins and instead seek to justify themselves in the eyes of their peers. They practice a sinful lifestyle while all the time claiming to be a Christian. Jesus said we would know these false prophets by their fruit, not their gifts. Oh, my friends, think of a Christmas tree with all of its bells and its, um, its glitter and its tinsel. But if you want to know what kind of tree it is, you got to pull aside the balls and the decoration, the tinsel, and look back in there and look for some fruit, maybe a pine cone or something. Oh, this is a cedar tree. Oh, this is a, this is a fir tree. You can only know what kind of tree it is by looking at the fruit. And Jesus said we would know false prophets, not by their gifts, but by their fruit. I told, I told about in an early one, I'll, call, I'll close with this. When I was, was young, I, I went to a meeting. I was very impressed and drawn by a big banner that had a person's name. And the caption said, God's 20th century prophet. And I went to two or three of these meetings. And uh, this person was quite impressive. And he would walk the aisles and call people out and prophesy to them. And his prophecies were filled with, uh, you know, all kinds of impressive uh, symbolisms and so on. But the pastor suddenly closed the meeting down because he discovered that in private, this man was contacting some of the members of the church that he had found out had money and had prophesied them to give him money and to give him land. My friends, he, he, was, he, he was a false prophet. He obviously was one of these, he was greedy and he was a ravenous wolf, but he, he was going about in sheep's clothing. Now, again, you see, it wasn't a matter of someone who had sinned and fallen and they had repented and turned to God and asked forgiveness and God forgives and they go on. No, we're talking about somebody that this is a character. This is something that, that is ongoing in their lives. I remember somebody sending me a prophecy that somebody had given. And when I read it, my thought was, my response was, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trust anything this person said. And it was because that I knew something of this person's lifestyle over a number of years. And his character was not good at all. So my friends, although we must remember at all times that God is a forgiving God. And if somebody sins, if they fall, that God will forgive them. 
but but check out the fruit check out the character is it just something that happened once or twice and you know and they're over it or is it or is it a lifestyle is it a part of their character jesus said you will know them by their fruit beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing but inwardly they are grievous wolves you will know them by their fruit you will know them by their character this is eddie hyde i'm so glad you've joined me today I look forward to seeing you tomorrow for another episode of the Awakening Podcast.